Welcome to Proof Points, a podcast by Latham High Tech Seeds. I'm product manager Steve Sick, and each week I'll be interviewing Latham team members throughout the territories. We'll have discussions on agronomy, hot topics in the industry, and what we're seeing across Latham country. Family owned and farm proven for more than 75 years, Latham Seeds is growing strong. Today we're here with Gary Geske, Northern Product Lead for Latham High Tech Seeds. How are you today, Gary? Doing pretty good, Steve. Thank you. Good, good. A lot of interesting things going on in the seed treatment world. So how would you say, you know, seed treatment uh, plays to Latham growers and kind of what you've seen on the seed treatment side? Uh, Sure, Steve. So I really think that it's all about quality and yield. So let's look Mm -hmm. a little bit before the seed treatment even. You know, the soybean seed is as genetically perfect as it can be when it's on a plant right before harvest. Uh Latham does a great job at harvest time uh, looking at the seeds, uh, binning the seeds based on uh, uh, purity and based on uh, uh, how well the growers take care of it. And all through uh, cleaning, conditioning, uh, we do the best job that we can to protect the yield that Mother Nature um, and the genetics put into that Mm -hmm. seed. So let's look at seed treatments as maybe an insurance policy. Much like farmers will not farm without crop insurance anymore, seed treatments are insurance to uh, protect the yield that's within that plant. Because we never know what Mother Nature is going to throw at it, right? You know, whether it's a warm, wet, warm, cool, uh, cool, wet, Mm -hmm. cool, dry. um, We need to protect the yield that's in that seed. That's the role that seed treatments do. And that's why the seed treatment, we need to have uh, multiple modes of action and Mm -hmm. protect against as many things as we can. So you're saying it's more of a protector than an enhancer? Uh, It only looks as an enhancer if it's protecting something that's out there. Uh, That's a good point. Real good point. You know, if you look at a lot of seed treatments nowadays, you look at all the different active ingredients we're putting on there. Is there a number or a limit to the number of components we can put on the seed before we harm the germ? Uh, the harming the germ is, is, is a good point because some people would probably think that, but from the inception or development stage of all these molecules mm-hmm. that we look at and use, the manufacturers have done a great job looking at what rates are effective, uh, what rates go over the top, and they're not going to introduce a molecule that's going to affect germination. Let's look at it maybe more of how much can we put on the seed? There's only so much surface area <laughs> right. on the seed, only so much you can do. So we need to make sure that the products that we select are the best in efficacy and performance. And we also need to keep in mind uh, plantability, uh, dust off of the seed for worker protection and and uh, safety of the environment and things like that. So. Uh, that's what we're really looking for is is to make sure that that's there and not so much that the germ is going to be affected. Mm-hmm. You know, you mentioned dust off. How important and how much has that changed, you know, in the years uh, when we first started out? A lot of things we were using were not very worker friendly. Well, I, I agree. And we've had a conversation before that throughout uh, uh, sometimes rebagging processes and things like that, uh, certain molecules and products really have affected me and some products more than others. And it all boils down to the the polymers and what we do to keep those treatments on the seed. So we've learned a lot on polymers and encapsulating Mm -hmm. and and doing things over the years. And so, yeah, I'm a firm believer in in new technology. No, good. And one of the other things you mentioned about was testing. Um, All of Latham's Seed treatments have been thoroughly tested and vetted across the industry. Uh, they they really have, and and we actually have a testing and vetting process uh, within Latham. We have multiple uh, locations that we have seed treatment trials at. So uh, we're going to look at them uh, as much as the manufacturers look at them, but we get to look at them in our controlled environment, and we get to look at what makes our seed treatment better. What can we add to make it better? No, that's that's a good point, Gary. Uh, one of the things that a lot of companies don't do is just take the manufacturer's word for it, and that's what they go with. And 
uh, as an example, those seat treatment trials will be at the premium agronomy centers in both Glendon and down in Alexandria, Iowa. So please make sure and come out and take a look at those. Uh, definitely see some interesting things and, and see what's new and upcoming. So what do you consider really as the turning point or that game changing moment that we see in the seed treatment world? Uh, in a simplistic term, probably in my opinion, equipment technology. And here's why, you know, as commodity prices go up and down, you know, whenever they're up, farmers, growers are willing to try things and look at things, right? Right. Why well, remember back in the day when I was farming and we'd hang a two and a half gallon jug on a fence post or stick a, a, a bag on there and go, well, that's where the trial starts. Or you put a bag underneath right. a rock. We can't really find those anymore. Yep. But now with the new technology, from the time that you're planting, you can put the information in and and the computer, everything's going to keep track of that from planting, from uh, spraying all the way through harvest. And so now the grower can sit in the kitchen table after harvest with a cup of coffee and look at the data and really analyze in this part of the field, what paid, what worked, what are the difference and changes. And mm -hmm. so the equipment, the computer remembers where everything's at. To me, that's a game changer because it can be proven time and time again. Right, right. What would you recommend to someone who may be a little skeptical on Sea Dreamers, may not want to pay that little bit of extra money for the insurance? Uh, you know, try it. Really try it. And don't try it on just a strip here there. Give it a fair chance. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a 40 or 80 acre block side by side so you can go out there and really see some of the times when you get seed treatments and insecticides close and you use a small strip you have a border effect right. back and forth yep. and and so you really don't see the difference until you get out into the bigger field so uh, certainly give it on a try on on a sizable acreage where you can see what it's doing yeah i agree i mean it's it's one of those things that you know back in my early days when you, you got to see it to believe it and touch and feel it and just see that difference as you'll notice difference in plan height, um, stand establishment is one thing, especially when you get an early wet season as well. So definitely um, take Gary's advice, try it and you'll like it. There's no doubt about it. So Gary, you're also the Northern product lead for Latham. How are things progressing this year um, after receiving a record amount of snowfall? I know there was some debate on whether if North, North Dakota is even going to be a plant of this year. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I saw a picture yesterday, Steve, and there's still snow banks along oh, the road in, in western North Dakota. So the snow is still going away. However, the snow melt really went better than anybody thought it could. Even with the cool spring, uh, you know, the sun goes up in the sky, we get more rays and you get more daylight hours and the snow melts and goes away. We had a couple of big rains on the eastern part of the state that maybe affected our spring planting more than a snow melt. We still have a little flooding going on, but you know, with the equipment we have, we're pounding the crop in as fast as we, we can. And, and I think we are actually even ahead of last year yet. No, good to hear. Uh, you know, as Gary mentioned, with the size of equipment anymore, it doesn't take very long to, to plant a lot of acres. You know, and that's kind of also ties back into the seed treatment. You know, what were you noticing as far as soil temperatures coming out of that snowfall when people were starting to planting? Uh, it was a little cool. <laughs> um, I think that's uh, the nice way of saying it. We force the issue as much as we can. If we can carry the ground, the crop starts going mm -hmm. in. And it isn't just always start with wheat and then go into your corn and then go into soybeans. We have soybeans going in even ahead of wheat. So we are really challenging um, the, the seed treatments that we're using. And, and we have seed treatments on corn and wheat and, and beans. So we are out there actively protecting the seed as best we can up north. One of the things that's unique about North Dakota, Gary, is you've got so many diverse crops up here. What, you know, more crops than what you'll see across you know, the high states or the heartland. You know, did the delay in planting cause growers to switch crops this year? Well, it always causes you to think, right? <laughs> but I, I'm still a firm believer in a good crop plan in the fall. It's still a good crop plan in the spring because you need to look at the rotation that's good for your farm, your equipment, and everything that's going on. Are there going to be some changes? Absolutely, there will. 
commodities are always trying to buy acres and, and get you to switch your mind and do some things. Uh, look at the wheat crop down south. It's it's a little bit challenging, right. but yet it really isn't affecting that much up here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's going to be some acre shift here and there, different regions, but all in all, I think we're going to sit with uh, w- within a few percentage points what we always do up here. You know, one thing, and, that, and that's a good point and an interesting point, Gary, as we've seen the climates change and some shifts in temperatures and such, have you seen anything along the lines of maturity shift or just people moving to fuller season maturities um, and taking advantage of the longer growing seasons? Or what have you seen on that side of it? Well, even with uh, last year with late planting and right. and uh, this year's looking to be the same, but Mother Nature's always given us that that harvest season, right, or that right. that growing season. Yeah. And the crops have been coming off. More specifically, corn has been coming off, and and the moisture's have been good. And so people are creeping up a little bit at a time uh, on maturity again. But we have done such a good job as an industry, really selecting high yielding early varieties that there's really not that big a need to stretch mm-hmm. maturity to get yield anymore. So uh, we're we're looking a little bit higher maturity. We may be dropping off a little bit this week. You know, we're we're starting to get towards the end of May, right? Right. right. And so people are looking at, but I don't see any wholesale changes going on yet. Mm-hmm. Good. Good to hear. One of the things you mentioned about was yield. You know, over the years, what have you seen as far as yield progression goes in corn and soy? I mean, have we taken advantage of that season? Yields are getting higher, increasing. We're getting better and better at farming, growing the crop up here. Right. Um, when I was farming, if we hit 100 bushel an acre, we we're doing hand spring, wow. right? Well, what a change from right. there to now. You know, we're expecting 150, 170. 180 bushel corn, Jeez. and and that's what the banker's looking for. So we're getting better at doing it. We're understanding what the corn needs, mm-hmm. and we have a little bit more corn up here. I think there's even a, a new microclimate up here because of the respiration of the mm-hmm. corn crops and, and what we do. I, I We are just getting better at raising the crop up here. Mother Nature is certainly helping, uh, but uh, we're, yeah, yields are increasing. That's good to hear. I mean, you know, that's one thing on the R&D side. We, we've always been a kind of a hole up here in the north is yield average rate of gain it's just been a little slower but we're really seeing that as we get into modern genetics and newer genetics yeah well you see the the new class that's coming out see once we start walking the fields you know we we've, we've got some sub 80, 80 all the way up to 90 day uh, maturity corns that uh, i'm really excited mm-hmm. to to bring to yield this year because uh our initial testing last year was just gangbusters. Yeah, and we've got a pretty robust program for testing up here, don't we, Gary? We really do. You know, it's it's not just looking at it once or twice and it's there. We really take and actively insert the new products in all of our research trials and really try and hold hold them to the mm-hmm. fire, you know, if you will, to get the yield out of them. Right. And then we have the, what I would call the demonstration plot or the show mm-hmm. plots that we're actually taking the dealers to, and it's proof of confidence, if you will, right. um, to show them what's going on. No, that's that's very good. As we wrap things up, Gary, what's the one takeaway you'd like our listeners to know about the North? Uh, we touched on it a little bit, but really Latham dedication and product performance, in my mind. You know, we've got multiple research locations mm-hmm. up here, and we're not just looking at two or three different new hybrids or varieties you know it's an active research program including research happening down in mexico for us and all over the place we're looking at everything that's coming through and along with some of our new ones and then once we've brought those to the top level the top five percent or ten percent then we're putting them into uh what i would call uh dedicated product training places mm-hmm. to where we're bringing our dealers and the right. growers in to really show them the the difference between our varieties. So uh, I think that's what Latham is really bringing to the North. They're not just saying we know what's going on in the North, they're actually doing it. You know, one thing you mentioned about was the extent of t- extensive testing we've got in the North. What about the North Dakota state trials? Uh, we're active in the North Dakota state trials all the way from uh, the Fargo area, all, all the way through Minot. 
uh, we're in there and we actually have uh, the Minot uh, NDSU putting in one of our uh, show plots, or, uh, training plots, if you will, up there on a neutral site. And uh, so I'm excited with partnering with with our, uh, our, our colleges and universities to bring that unbiased information out to everybody. And that goes for corn and soybeans, correct, Gary? It, it does. Okay, absolutely. Good. Good to hear. So with that, you can look forward to a lot of things coming this fall, a lot of yield data, all independent yield data as well. So stay tuned as things progress for this fall and throughout this growing season. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Proof Points. Thanks for tuning in and have a great week.